Coming up at 11, brush fires were found across East Kentucky today. But rain tonight could bring some much needed moisture. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Parts of the area will receive heavy rainfall tonight and stronger storms are expected tomorrow. We enter a severe weather alert day. Meteorologist Cameron Aaron tells us what to expect leading into tomorrow. Cameron. Yeah, that's right, Keaton. We have went ahead and gone into our severe weather alert day coverage as a chance for some stronger storms are possible as we get into your Monday. But I do want to stress tonight all is quiet over at the London Corbin Airport. Current temperature is sitting at 59 degrees and those showers we had earlier today like we expected are now pushing off towards the north and up on pinpoint Doppler. We are mostly dry this evening and into the tonight and that will continue throughout the rest of tonight as well. We are watching out for this area of low pressure over Arkansas. You can see a tornado watch box, even a couple of tornado warnings over northern Arkansas, and this is the culprit for our severe weather risk as we get into your Monday. Temperatures tonight, though, upper 50s to upper 60s in spots, even sitting at 70 at this hour down in Jacksboro. The forecast for tonight, temperatures falling off into the upper 50s and lower 60s. We stay mostly cloudy, watching out for a couple of stray showers. Those will mainly be over our northern counties. I got your full forecast and what you can expect tomorrow coming up just a little bit later. Keaton. Thanks, Cameron. Some breaking news out of Perry County this evening. Hazard Fire Department confirmed with us there is a brush fire just west of Highway 15 near the Bonneman community. Hazard Fire Department's at the scene. The fire is on Flat Gap Road near Days Lane. Officials could not confirm with us if homes were in danger or the containment of the fire. The Fire Commission has awarded the Hyman Volunteer Fire Department a $10,000 grant. The grant will allow the department to purchase new up-to-date personal protective equipment. More than 230 other fire departments across the state received the grant. Fire Chief Preston Hayes says great things are happening at Hyman Volunteer. To be able to get the volunteer fire service and be able to get our name out there and see that we are making progress, that we are here in the community. You might not hear from us unless you need us, but we're always down here every day. Hey says four firefighters, firefighters will receive new boots, turnout pants, coats, Nomex hoods, helmets, and gloves. There have been reports of wildfires and brush fires coming in throughout the day. This morning, the Bell County fire, Volunteer Fire Department responded to a brush fire. Fire was located in Bradfordstown near Highway 221. Bell County Fire Marshal's Office and Bell County Judge David Blackburn reinstated the burr ban yesterday for everyone in the county. Richland, Kentucky also saw a brush fire this afternoon. The Richland Fire Department was called at around 1215. According to the department's Facebook page, there was a brush fire near Couch Cemetery Road. Two trucks and several firefighters were on the scene to push back the flames. As the dry conditions and strong winds continued through the day, the Tennessee Division of Forestry has issued a very high fire danger warning for East Tennessee. Burn permits are not being issued during this time, and burning is strongly discouraged. Montgomery County Fire EMS will soon use a new tool to treat patients. Pandemic paramedics excuse me, are currently learning how to use ultrasound, ultra, ultrasound machines. It's a tool that's popular in other states. Battalion Chief Jeffrey Jackson said only a handful of Kentucky agencies have them. The department purchased three butterfly ultrasound machines. A grant from the Kentucky Fire Commission covered the $11,000 purchase. Jackson said there are a lot of situations they can be used in. A large clot in the lung. Um, someone that's in a shock state, maybe try to determine why uh, their blood, blood pressure is so low. Maybe from trauma, um, a medical condition that caused a, uh, a rupture vessel inside their, their chest or abdomen. Um, maybe they're uh, septic from a, an illness. He said the tool can allow patients to be treated more effectively by getting the diagnosis faster. He said paramedics are in the middle of their ultrasound training right now. And the department hopes to start using the equipment on patients soon. A typically busy parking garage in the heart of downtown Lexington was filled with police a little before 3 a.m. Saturday morning. We now know one man was shot and killed and another taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Those who frequent downtown for work or play are left feeling uneasy. In the past year, the West Short Street area has been the site of two other killings. Police say back in November, 39-year-old Benjamin Call beat 31-year-old Ty Abner to death just before 10 that night. Today marks the two-year anniversary of the first case of COVID-19 in Kentucky. 
Grayson Passmore looks back on the milestone. And we have had 10 uh, tests. March 6, 2020. Negative, but now we do have the first positive. The day we learned of the first known case of coronavirus in Kentucky. At that point, I didn't even know what COVID was. So when he said that, I was just like, I don't know what that is. What does that mean? At the time, then 27-year-old Julia Donahue from Cynthiana was fighting for her life in a hospital. I, I get that it's scary. While the rest of the state braced for the unknown impact of what a confirmed COVID-19 case would mean. We know more about the disease. We know better how to manage the disease. We have more therapeutics uh, to treat the disease. Compared to the rest of the country, Kentucky still has a relatively high number of cases. 26,000 new cases over the past two weeks. But the positivity rate is finally starting to go down. Lexington physician Dr. Jeff Fox reflects on scientific strides made since that first case two years ago. We have now have vaccines to prevent the disease um, where the testing is much more robust and available. And so if you take all of that and compare it to two years ago, we're much better off than we, than we were. Milestones that mean even more to Dr. Fox as March also marks two years since he was hospitalized with the virus. You know, I was one of the first ones to get sick. Uh, I guess it was this, it was this month and um, nobody knew what to do. I mean, they, you know, they were afraid of it. Uh, um, they didn't know how to treat it. Dr. Fox considered himself lucky to be alive. While he was really sick, he became one of the first to receive convalescent plasma therapy. A patient who had gotten at the same time recovered was able to give me plasma. Uh, they don't do that anymore. We now have monoclonal antibodies. So, so we did, you know, we've come a long way. And hopefully going forward, we'll even get better. At it. In Lexington, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. Lexarts hosted a play date at Keeneland Saturday, welcoming its schools who will be part of this year's horse play program. This is all part of horse mania. Those schools will soon start their own painting project for it. Professional artists spoke with the students. Yesterday, organizers say 92 of the 150 horses made for Horse Mania will come from horse play. It will be scattered throughout Lexington. It's called Bourbon Law, and it's going to be a horse that mainly looks like the barrel staves, the oak staves on the outside of the horse, with a cutout shape of Kentucky, so you can see into the bourbon barrel and see the bourbon aging, the aging process. Sweetall says the horses will start appearing around town in mid-May, and they'll stay on display through the running of the Breeders' Cup in November before being auctioned off. Students at the University of Kentucky partied all through the night on Saturday, not in celebration of a cat's win, but rather in support of a good cause. Dance Blue's 24-hour-long marathon to raise funds and fight pediatric cancer at Kentucky Children's Hospital kicked off Saturday evening at Memorial Coliseum. Jennifer Minear was a driving force behind creating the marathon. It all started with a request from her son, Jarrett, who lost an 11-year battle with a rare bone cancer in 2002. I still keep in contact with some people that, that, uh, that, I, um, that I dance with, though. Now, a lot of them, you know, have like, their own separate lives, but they still, you know, still, like, tweet hashtags, like, what they did before, and, and, uh, and then they're so proud of what they did. Minear has watched the event grow since 2006, with hundreds of dancers turning up each year to raise millions of dollars. Coming up at 11 in Eastern Kentucky Natives, artwork is being featured in this year's Kentucky Derby Woodford Reserve Bottle. We share her story and what it means for her representing the 606 area.